Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Weeder comparison video. My name is Michael. And this is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Barnes & Noble Nook HD versus the Amazon Kindle Fire HD 7. Both of these are pretty similar. You're looking at 1440 by 990 for the resolution for the Nook HD versus 1280 by 800 for the Kindle Fire. They're both 7-inch tablets. The processors are relatively the same. You're looking at one point two for the Kindle Fire and 1.3 for the Nook HD. As far as a storage, it depends on what unit you buy, but they both have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and battery life is generally around 10 to 11 hours. Peter here is going to show you a little bit about the hardware. All right. Um, the Kindle Fire has a camera on the front there with a light sensor. It also has a very large bezel, and this is to accommodate the Dolby surround sound, di Dolby digital sound on the back, two speakers in each side offering unparalleled uh, performance for audio on 7-inch tablets. Micro USB on the bottom along with a micro HDMI as well. Um, on the right you have volume controls you'll see here, up and down as well as a power button and a 3.5 mil headphone jack. Microphone on the top, nothing going on on the left. And for the Barnes & Noble, this is the white color. It comes in other colors as well. You have your N button that sends you back home. You have your power button slash standby. You have your Nook proprietary jack, which they've gone to in their latest model that looks like this. It looks very much like uh, an Apple product, but it will not fit in a, any Apple product. At Barnes & Noble incidentally is going to be releasing uh, third-party accessories uh, what they told us is that uh, through this they're going to be doing uh, micro HDMI and a myriad of other things you have uh, external storage to uh, expand the memory up to 32 gigabytes you also have a status indicator light volume up and down and you have stereo speakers much like the Kindle except there's only one speaker in each side on this device and there are no web cameras on the front or back. All right, so yeah, basically you're looking at webcams on the Kindle Fire and everything else is pretty co comparable other than uh, the Nook HD has expendable memory so it allows you to buy and save money on an 8 gig device because you can put a 32 gig SD in it for your media music videos. We're going to look at software now. Okay, both of these units are running a modern version of Android with the ICS. And you can see that this is anything but your standard Android experience. Both companies have invested a lot of time and effort to making their main home screens look as unique as possible. Peter, what's going on here with the Amazon Kindle Fire HD 7? Um, as Michael said, yes, they, they both are, uh, they have Android elements such as the multiple pages and the, the, dro the top drop downs kind of giving you hotkeys and statuses of downloads and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, they each bring their own unique things to the table. You can see Kindle Fire has their own carousel here that they, uh, they've had since the first edition of the Kindle Fire last year. And then now the Nook has applied that very similar thing, <laughs> um, method of... Uh, app maneuvering to their own tablet. We also have uh, icons on the home screen, much like uh, you can with uh, the individual menus, you can kind of move things around and um, uh, once you use something, it'll be shown up on your carousel and you can always remove things from your carousel. So they each have their own ways of customizing your home screen to a certain degree. The Nook, a little bit more with uh, wallpapers and such, live wallpapers, a little bit more um, stock Android experience than the Kindle. Not exactly a full Android experience, obviously, because it's, you know, they're all different in their own way, but uh, that's pretty much what we're seeing here. Yeah, of course, you have sub-screens here that you could kind of, kind of customize. Right, whereas the Kindle has everything up top, shop, games, apps, books, music, videos, newsstand, audiobooks, and so forth. One of the strong elements that the Nook HD brings to the table is with uh, profiles. You can actually establish new profiles. Say for your kid, you can establish if it's a boy, a girl, put names, uh, age as well. So you could, as a parent, say, okay, I don't want them to have access to the store. 
but I do want to let them browse the internet. I want to allow them to watch both kids' books and videos, but I want to say, okay, I only want them to have access to PG, PG-13, and G movies, but I don't want them to play any games. That's rather cruel, Michael. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, you make personalized recommendations, okay, they're sporty, important skills, and spooky stuff. And then you could add books and everything else. So it's kind of cool that you do have a lot of options. The Kindle Fire does have parental control options as well, but it doesn't go as advanced in terms of like profile yeah. sets up, setups. And when you log in with uh, your kid's account, all this would change, all this would change. It would just have your kid's books and things like that. Right. Um, for example, if we complete all that, you'll see that uh, we've eliminated quite a bit of things now. There's only library apps and web. There's no more shops so they can make purchases. Much like with the Kindle, it says you restrict purchasing, content types, web browsing, and access to other features. So when you put that on, you can set boundaries, but not as in-depth as you can on the Nook. Yeah, so what we're trying to say is the nook hd is really like a family device and i i do really like what they're doing there and i think it's uh probably the most advanced type of profile set up with a tablet being built as an e-reader on the market today so now that we've looked at the home screen showed you a little bit about the parental control features i think it's time to look at the reading experience all right so we're going to select the same book on each device here and they'll be brought to the introductory page so you can see here, these are how the book is displayed um, by default on both units. So from there, you can tap the middle to bring up additional options such as font settings, which is probably the most important uh, part to configure your reading experience. You can see everything changes live on the Kindle as well as on the Nook, except on the Nook everything kind of goes through a full refresh cycle, which can get a little bit annoying, but it's nothing to really um, write home about. You see that? Everything changes very instantly on the Kindle. You have font styles. Some, something that the Nook really excels in is, uh, although on the Kindle you see you have white, sepia, sepia, and black, the Nook actually has six of them. Creams, browns, off-whites, grays, blacks, whites. They have far more settings for adjusting the style of screen you're going to read in than the Kindle does, which is, I think, a really good feature. Yeah, I mean, considering that these are tablets being built as an e-reader. A lot of people are going to read in low light conditions or in completely dark rooms. If you're doing that, the last thing you want is a super loud, glowing white screen killing your eyes. Exactly. So uh, if we go back, they also have things like um, bookmarks and, uh, you know, they have lookups and all that kind of search in book. But we'll uh, look at the most important things here. For example, x-ray. It's not available on this book, but X-Ray is a service you can watch our, our, our uh, past videos where we explain what X-Ray is. It's a way to, uh, if you're balancing more than one book at a time and you forget what a uh, person's name is, it'll give you a brief synopsis of what they've done, where they appear in the book, and so forth. Uh, Michael's making a note, like you can on the Kindle as well. He's made a note on the entire uh, paragraph there. You can also make highlights. You can also, when you press and hold one uh, of the words, you get a full definition. And from there, you can click search, and you can search in the book. Also, if you press more, you can search Wikipedia and search on the web as well. So uh, you also get the full definition at dictionary.com on here. So they both do very similar things. Um, on uh, the uh, Nook, you get to search in Wikipedia and Google. And uh, page turns are uh, just as fast as the, um, they're, they're pretty much on par. There's no fancy page turn animations. Um, unlike the Kobo uh, arc where as you turn a page it would just change, this actually offers some sort of scrolling animation to, uh, not to the degree of say an iPad uh, mini where it has the cool page turn, but uh, this is what you're dealing with on here. Yeah, both of these reading apps that they have sort of built into it, perfectly acceptable. Both 
most of them have the same features. Uh, the Nook has more colored backgrounds, but in essence, they both have the same type of, um, you know, increase the size of your text, change your font completely, line spaces, margins, all that good stuff. And they're always introducing new features as well. Um, one of the benefits of purchasing a tablet, especially an Android tablet, is that you want to do more media-centric things like magazines, uh, e-ink-based readers, absence of color, you don't really get the most out of the magazine. So this is the same magazine, Rolling Stone. We have the Nook HD, Kindle Fire HD here. We'll let you guys uh, decide which one looks better. Remember, higher resolution on this guy, same size screen, so put that into account when you're uh, making your decision. They both have page turn animations where you can kind of hold it halfway and uh, peek on the next page. Much like a magazine, you get all the ads. Oh, there's the Fire HD on that side. I, I actually like the ads because um, it really feels like you're reading a magazine when you see, you know, pretzel ads, <laughs> little snack treats and stuff. Yeah, just, you know. Not uh, the, it's like more ads than anything else. It does else. seem that way. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> I think I jinxed it. So a few things that the Nook does that the Kindle doesn't. You have article view. Whereas on the Kindle you have a fancy magnifying glass. Ooh, look at that. So... Makes, we, makes we, it more into an ebook. They don't have an uh, article view exactly on the Kindle, but if you do dive in a little bit, um, you do get that similar ebook experience. But uh, we're going to showcase something on the Nook that the Kindle doesn't even come close to doing, which is scrapbooking, which is a very cool uh, feature that I wish the Kindle had. I really yeah, do. I mean, say, I pretend I like Star Wars. Right, and you were holding an actual magazine, and Michael said, hey, I really like this, I want to show Pete. You go, rip. Tear that right out, put it into our clipping uh, scrapbook right there, and we'll show you where to access that in my library. You can actually look at the scrapbooks, and there you have the pages, um, both the one we've ripped out now. That's the one we ripped which is out. the Star Wars one, and uh, various other pages that we've ripped from other magazines, not even the one that we uh, are using, just this one. But, uh, yeah, you can pretty much put whatever you want in there from magazines and... Uh, it's much like having a real scrapbook. Yeah, and these are saved too, so you can show them off to your friends and things like that. Uh, just the unique elements like this are only really applicable to magazines. Article view is uh, applicable to magazines, newspapers, and the internet, but aren't available to comics. And scrapbook is magazines only, and only magazines purchased from Barnes and Noble. Right. Next thing we're going to look at is newspapers. You can see here on the Nook, we have the Wall Street Journal purchased from the Barnes & Noble marketplace. And on the Kindle, we have the Wall Street Journal app, unfortunately. Um, on the Amazon, when you download uh, newspapers, they're actually going to be their own fully-fledged app. So you can see here, uh, Wall Street Journal app, USA Today app, and New York Times app. So once you do open that app, you can then click on additions of what happened on... Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, now, and so forth. And you can see they deliver the content in a little bit of a similar way, but uh, they're different in their own ways here. Yeah, I mean, in essence, they're newspapers. You're not going to get, like, the true newspaper experience that you would see with a uh, press reader or other companies, but you can click on the sections and then click on a particular article. Right, they have their sections on the uh, Amazon here, too. You can see on the right... And you can, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of the way either of these two display the newspapers um, because it doesn't really look like a newspaper. I'm not used to it. Whereas, say, the Cobalt Arc that we just recently uh, reviewed, uh, that was like looking at a full newspaper. So if you were to pick up a newspaper and then pick up a Cobalt Arc, you would say, hey, it's the same thing. Whereas if you go from a newspaper to this, you're kind of wondering what's going on. In many cases, I think that they've done it this way so they can appeal to the widest array of users. Um, traditional newspapers, font's very small. With this, you can change ev everything that we showed you with the eBooks can be applied towards newspapers. And that's with like pretty well, I think, both devices that you could increase the size of the text and fonts right, and things like that. Right, they have text sizes up above and stuff like that, so. 
Yeah, so suffice to say, they both do newspapers. They both do them in a bit different ways, right. but they both give you a lot of versatility in terms of making a newspaper more like an ebook and pros and cons. You know, I'm sure people could find virtues in both, but we wanted to show you how they both of these companies present you with this content because right. a lot of people dig newspapers, right? You can also go into videos and images, which you can't do on real newspapers, as we all know, because you uh, can't display videos on real newspaper whereas you can click on some of the links here when they say images you can actually click on images and blow it up into a full HD picture which is a really nice feature so as Michael said yeah they they all have their own ways of delivering content next we're gonna look at comic books and on the Kindle Fire we have the Marvel app whereas unfortunately we don't have um, the Marvel app on the Barnes & Noble because you can't sideload APKs. You are uh, forced to deal with the shop. So we have a similar comic on both of these devices, Venom. And you can see right there, this is the full screen version of both these pictures. So we'll just take a quick three seconds so you guys can look at that. And already it does look like the resolution's better on this, but the colors are popping out on this. So as you can see, it has a page turn animation, whereas on here, we just have our scrolling picture. So, you know, that's what we're dealing with here. Well, one of the reasons why you're seeing these anima animations on the Barnes & Noble is because Barnes & Noble directly sells graphic novels, and so they have their own comic book engine. And so this is why when we looked at magazines and ebooks and everything else that you get these page turns because it's using the same sort of rendering engine whereas this is running on an app right if you double tap a a panel you you can see that you can go into panel view on the Kindle which is running on the Marvel app you also have pinch and zoom You have browse pages, something you can't do in a real comic is just flicker through all the pages of the book, so that's a very good feature. They're both displaying the comic pretty equally. Uh, once again, if you've uh, missed all that, the resolution on the Barnes & Noble is far superior to that of the Kindle, almost by 200 pixels uh, uh, bigger, in fact. So. Yeah, so... This is the comic book experience. Both of them do a fairly adequate job. I mean, it, they don't look too different. It's not like a night no, and day difference, but there are subtle differentiations. I'd probably say for comic books, you will do better on the Amazon Kindle Fire because the Barnes & Noble Nook store only offers graphic novels and not single issues as of this date. Right. And whereas the Kindle Fire, you do get the flexibility of dealing with the Marvel app, where in essence you have thousands of comics at your fingertips. So. Right. You can download Dark Horse, DC Comics. If, right. if the comic book companies have Android apps, and they all do, then you have access to way more comic content on the Kindle than you do the Nook. So exactly. your comic book lover, I think um, the proof is in the pudding. Right. We're going to look at videos now. So you can see there for the first uh, half of that video presentation there, we had the Nook HD full blast. And then for the second half, we had the Kindle uh, Fire HD on full. And uh, the quality on the Kindle Fire HD was uh, 
almost double as uh, loud and uh, very clear com in comparison. Yeah, I mean, we'll let the user the users make their own call on, on what they like better. One thing that we've noticed when we've tried to sync up these videos is that the Kindle always has like a, a second or a split a, second yeah, delay, a point yeah. 0.5 second delay from when you press play and the video starts, whereas with the Nook HD, you press play and the video just starts. Which, which isn't much of a make or break uh, issue, but uh, that is a, it's a little thing, yeah. Hey, and in comparison, you know, all these little things, you know, make, make a difference. So we've showed you everything that has to do with these two devices. The last thing that we want to show you is the store experience because Content ecosystems really make or break a device as we've seen with the Microsoft Surface. So both of these stores are fundamentally different. They do offer apps, ebooks, and a ton of other content. So we'll just quickly show you how the stores look. So with the Kindle Fire, um, it's a little different how you'd go to the store. For example, if you click on Shop, which does get you to the Amazon App Store, and on the Barnes & Noble you click on Shop, um, you'll see here that it brings you to this screen, but um, each individual section, such as books on the Barnes & Noble, is going to look different based on what you choose here on the Kindle. For example, the bookstore right here is going to look completely different once we go to the store, sorry, as you can see that. It's going to look completely different than, say, the video store, which looks very different than the bookstore did. So it's almost as if they have a, a store for each on the Kindle Fire. Yeah, it almost looks like the every bit of content from like apps to video to audiobooks look a lot different. So you're not getting that persistent experience. Whereas if you look at the Nook store, whether you're looking at kids' books, whether you're looking at apps, more or less the presentation is the same. And I almost like the Barnes Noble store design a little bit better. I mean, it's like white, it's you know, all the uh, icons can scroll with like a panoramic type view, so it's uh, an effective use of screen real estate. Uh, the Kindle Store, it's really black. Yeah, well, I mean, they've both they've both chosen their th they've both chosen their own theme. So, um, I mean, that's just uh, you know, this is this is made to be white and this was made to be black. So, it's not like it was a. Uh an oops situation. Yeah, so this is more or less how the store looks. Of course, when you do look at, uh, you know, books, most of the time you can get uh, a sample with a... Borrow for free, try sample. Yeah, user reviews, more like this, overviews. They both more or less have the same thing. Amazon has a few different features. I, I do like the way that Amazon does their books. It's almost like a, a tablet-sized version of book descriptions on their main website when you browse for books on Amazon.com or whatever country that you're dealing with. So, Final thing before we fully wrap up here is uh, on the Amazon Kindle Fire, you have under Settings Device, you have Allow Installation of Applications from Unknown Sources. This allows you to download APK files from both the internet, uh, alternative app stores such as the Goody Reader App Market, and um, sources like uh, when you drag and drop files onto your tablet from your computer. So um, this cracks this device wide open because instead of just dealing with Amazon, which you still can, you can deal with alternative app stores, um, GetJar, One Mobile, etc. Whereas on the Barnes and Noble, it blocks a application, uh, it blocks installation of any outside source. Um, APKs, whether you have them on the device, on an SD card, on the web, will not allow you to download or install them whatsoever, and there is not a setting to disable that. Okay, so you can download our official Goody Reader App Store at goodyreader.com slash apps, and there's pictures and download links to allow you to either install it directly using the web browser of your Amazon Kindle Fire HD, or if you want to install it on any other Android tablet that you have, um, about six, 7,000 apps right now focused on reading comic books, ebooks, and games, and a lot of other content, so check it out. We've showed you everything with the Nook Tablet HD and the Amazon Kindle Fire 7. Please comment on this video and, sh and let us know your thoughts on what you like about each tablet and why, and if you're leaning towards a specific one, hey, let us know. YouTube.com slash Goody Reader. 
and you can read reviews and a whole lot of other content on our website at goodyreader.com and for goodyreader.com. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.